Hello, I'm Karen McMahon with Pig Health Today, and I'm visiting with Ross Keeney, who is a veterinarian at Swine Vet Center in St. Peter, Minnesota. And today we're going to talk about scours. Well, it feels like but, we're seeing an increase kind of in baby pig scours. More ones I've been working on have been early nursery. They seem to do pretty well in the farrowing house because they have perfect food there, right? They got the exactly what their mom makes for them. And once they have to come off that nice milk and go on to a solid feed, you know, that, that does a change to the gut. And these pigs don't seem to be getting through that transition quite as well. Um, three to six days in, we seem to have a five to seven percent that end up getting thinner, ending up in a sick pen where we really got to kind of re-get them going. And it's, it's frustrating for the staff and pretty hard. But we'll get most of those going again. It just feels harder. Um, and so I've been doing a lot more diagnostics, trying to see what disease is involved, and then also trying to decide what management things we can do better as well. So what, what do you think is causing this? Once I'm working with personally, uh, the disease I keep coming up with is rotavirus. Mm -hmm. So I think what's causing it is this change to the gut. Then rotavirus sees an opportunity to kind of cause some scour issues. It's usually uh, something that you can treat with. If you just have really good water, you can get them through it, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem like that's enough right now. And the, and the levels I'm finding in the guts are are higher than I think we've had in the past. So why do you think that is? Right, not much has changed. In fact, mm -hmm. if anything, we think we're getting better and better at stuff. One change that that is a change to the Duroc in the industry, we're using more Duroc, they seem to start a little harder early nursery. And then after that, they gain very, very well. And you know we're changing that for meat quality issues and all the right reasons, but we've had to, we're, we're having to relearn how to start those pigs a little bit. Mm -hmm. They need a warmer environment. Um, I think we need more water space for them maybe, possibly. I mean, those are the things we're kind of looking at. Um, but on my end as a veterinarian, I'm, I'm focused on the rotavirus end, you know, the disease end, and then working with my counterparts as far as the you know, actual environment and production end. But mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking into different products that maybe we could feed them early on that would help with the rotavirus. That's what I'm currently working on right now and haven't found anything that's automatic yet, but mm -hmm. things that have definitely helped. So that is helping then, you're saying? Well, we made some changes to nutrition. Um, so we're doing, we'll do, we'll try this feed A versus feed B, and it might have more whey in it or less whey in it or more sugars, less sugars or whatever, whatever the nutritionists come up with. We'll do a fecal scoring on them, and we've actually seen where we can improve it with a change in nutrition. And then there are companies that think they have some feed additives that might help, and we're just starting to evaluate those. Um, you also mentioned um, E. coli. Mm -hmm. You having some additional problems with E. coli? So yes, there's E. coli in behind it as well. That one can be easier to treat because it's a bacteria. So there is antibiotics that can help, but we're f finding some E. coli that are resistant to almost every antibiotic that we have. And so the, I think the I think this harder starting pig, then some rota, and then opportunistic pathogens like a E. coli jump in there and, and become real nuisance and uh, and. So battling that stuff has been has been harder this this and winter it's usually a little worse in the winter because it's you can chill pigs and mm -hmm. you know you have to shut down barns and that kind of thing so I'm a little worried this winter it could be another battle. Mm -hmm. How about the breed issue? Is As everybody is kind of going towards this Duroc line, and then what you'll see is pressure put on the genetic companies to maybe make a little starter, maybe that'll be something they'll look into, like, okay, maybe it needs to be a little hardier, maybe that, maybe maybe we have to have a, a lower or higher wean age, and we just haven't learned that yet with this. So we've definitely had to keep the barns warmer, and we've definitely had to have, I'd say, probably more access to water for this Duroc pig when we first wean it. Those those two things help a lot. And what age are they wean being weaned? Yeah, 21 days. Mm -hmm. um, that, yeah, 21, 22, and maybe we should take, maybe these would benefit from three more days on the sow or something. We can't just retrofit our farms to fit that all the time, but if it was something that was worth doing, we'd figure it out. So do you have any final advice for people who may be seeing the same problem? I think what you have to do is get in the barns a lot, um, uh, post a lot of pigs, so necropsy a lot of pigs and get those things in and, and get your list of what you're battling disease-wise and then work with your nutritionist a lot because I think that Moving from the sow's milk to a solid feed, it really can be kind of, it's a it's the, probably the most stress that those pigs will ever go under, right? Mm -hmm. Going, being weaned like that. So, so working with a nutritionist to make sure that that's the best transition for them um, can be very helpful. 